What the heck? Is it a red horse? Red donkey? What the heck? So there are new Lightroom Classic tools that you might not have heard about until today. So Lightroom Classic came out with a brand new update as of June 2025 with a bunch of exciting features. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about some of those features and test them out to see if they work and if they're any good. So make sure you have the latest version of Adobe Lightroom. So as of today, I have version Lightroom 8.4 and this has the release that came out in late June of 2025. So here I have a photo that I took when I went to Nepal a couple of years ago. So the first feature I wanna talk about is distraction removal. So this is an AI powered feature that Adobe Lightroom uses to automatically detect people and just remove them from your photo. So let's see if it works with this photo right here. So in your develop tab, you'll go up here into your remove button or you can press the Q key on your keyboard and this is where you'll find it down here where it says people distraction removal people as soon as you toggle that down and then we write your will go and select what it thinks are people in the image so in this image it quickly selected these people we'll remove them and it says it takes about 20 seconds actually it took less than that so it removes some not everybody I guess for a wider photo like this is a little bit more difficult for Lightroom to detect everybody. It does most of the job and you're able to go in and manually remove the remainder people in here. But super, super cool. One thing to note though, is that whenever you use an AI powered feature like this, where you generate a result that removes people, Adobe does give you an icon at the top here, this new one that says when you click on it that the following AI tools have been used, have been used on this photo, distraction removal people. So I think this is just a tag that Adobe will include in the photos whenever a photo has been modified by AI. And I honestly think this is a great feature to have because we always want to know whether a photo has been modified by AI, whether it's been removing people or adding or generating stuff that was not even in the photo in the first place. So. Definitely, I think it's a good thing to have. One thing to keep in mind is that this should be used before any of your edits that you do on your photo. So I have this photo right here and automatically look at that. It just selected the people right here uh, and then I'll remove them and see what happens. Pretty good. They have been removed. So you can click and hold on this little button here on the eye and you're able to see what has been removed. So there's still some people here that are kind of blocked by the grass that have not been removed. But overall, Adobe Lightroom was able to determine that I want to remove the people in the background, but not the person, me, who's the focus of the frame. So we have now this photo that I took when I was in Vienna last year. So let's toggle this. And these are all the people that Lightroom has selected and even selected the shadow of this person right here. So let's click and remove. And it removed most people, but there are some random people here generated weird. A headless person, a brand new headless person. Let's see what the original was. That was that. And it created this for some reason. So what I can try to do is go and hit that selection and go and check the different variations that Lightroom has just added a brand new person right there. So I wanted to remove a person, not add a completely new person. So I'm not sure what Lightroom's doing there. So I'll click on generate here and see what happened. Okay, that's better. So, okay, generated this. So it removed the people. So I guess with wide shots like that, with a lot more people, then you have to go in and tell Lightroom exactly what to do. So let's go on this person that was automatically generated. So there was, this is the original one with the photographer there and it placed this other person who's just walking. And yeah, let's click on generate. What the heck is this? What the heck? What the heck? Is it a red horse? Red donkey? What the heck? Okay, so let's check the variations. <laughs> oh my gosh. So that became a woman with a red coat and other random people. So, yeah, I don't know. 
I guess it's still a super brand new feature. It doesn't work all the time. Now we have some other random stuff um, and things like that. So yeah, so be mindful of this whenever you try to use this on a super wide shot. Lightroom might be confused on exactly what it needs to remove. But for the most part, it does a very good job. So let's go on this photo and I am going to toggle this down. And what I wanted to do with this photo, I wanted to see if Lightroom is able to automatically select people in the background that I don't want removed. So let's say I wanted to remove everyone else except this cyclist right here. Lightroom has done just that. Let's click on remove. And yeah, it did a pretty good job here. It did not add weird red horses in this image. And there's also a new feature, which is pretty cool, called reflections. So I'm gonna go here. This is a still frame of a video. So this is a moving frame, pardon the sort of soft focus on this image. I just felt like this was a good example to test this feature on because there's reflections here on the car. So let's talk about reflections right there. We'll select apply and Lightroom will take its time to remove the reflections and let's see what happens. So, okay, I don't think it did much. So I think it thinks the entire photo is a reflective image, like shot through a window. So I don't think that works. Okay, let's go to another example. Let's go into this one and to apply it. So that's the extreme and this is Okay, this is much better. Um, you're able to adjust the strength of that distraction removal or that reflection removal. You can see more of the of the person inside the car as you go in and increase that strength. So this is another photo that I got on Pexels. It is not my own image. I just felt that it was a really good image to try this effect on. So let's go and apply. Not bad. Not bad. So this is at 100% strength. And as you toggle it uh, or decrease that strength, you're able to completely remove whatever's inside. So you only shoot the window or see the window and then you come in and then you can completely reduce the reflection. So super neat. I think that this reflection distraction removal works really, really great. The next three features I want to talk about are not brand new to the June 2025 update, but what is new is that now you can apply these effects in a non-destructive way. So that means you don't have to create separate DNG files whenever you're using one of these features on an image. So I have this photo right here and we're going to find those features right here in the edit tab to detail. And here are denoise, raw details, and super resolution. So right now, denoise and raw details, they're faded out because you can only apply these um, effects to a raw image and it has to be a specific raw image. So all the details are in Adobe's website on which ones are applicable. So I'll go to a raw image right here. So this is a raw image that I have. So I'll click on denoise and see how that affects things. So these three are also AI powered features. So as soon as you use one of these features, you'll click here on this icon and you'll see that the following AI tools have been used on this photo, the noise. So let's zoom in here into the dark areas right there and let's lower that down. You can see that it does a really good job at taking away the noise here. So from that to 56 and then 79 and it can soften the image overall. So now let's take that, click, unclick that, and raw details. So raw details could produce a more crisp detail, improved color rendering, and more accurate renditions around the edges. So this feature is really useful if you're making large prints. The next feature is super resolution, which enhances the original image by doubling the height and the width. So let's go to this phone image that I have, and I'm going to apply super resolution it has doubled the size of my image and it says that I have to reapply or refresh the destruction removal here because I updated the feature here or I supersize this image. So yeah, that's a, another useful feature to have. You're able now to increase the quality of your photo without 
creating a separate DNG file for any of these AI features. So let me know if you think you're going to be using these features at all. If you haven't subscribed already and you're still here, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more videos from me. And if you're still around, here are a couple more videos you could watch next and I'll see you there.